Commitment Church, a place for all nations. My name is Mark. I'm one of the elders here at Commitment. We're going to get our service started at this time. A uh, special welcome to those that are watching via Commitment Online. Uh, we pray that you engage and enjoy the service today. Uh, today is the fourth Sunday, and uh, we usually partake in communion, so that's what we're going to be doing today. For those of you that stopped by yesterday to uh, pick up your communion packet, uh, be ready in the middle of the service. We're going to be partaking in communion together. Okay, and then today, uh, the last Sunday of July, uh, is a power service. So please engage and enjoy with us as we pray, as we worship the Lord together in today's service. With that, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Let's ask the Lord to be here with us today. Father God, we just thank you so much just for uh, your goodness, Lord God, your mercy, your graces, Lord, for your love, your care. Uh, you're such a great father, Lord God. And we thank you so much for the power of prayer, Lord God, this opportunity to communicate with you, to commune with you, Lord God. Um, we also thank you for this opportunity to, to worship you um, and to give you praise, Lord God. Your word teaches us that you inhabit the praises of your people. So, Father, I just pray that even now as we pray that you just remove all things in this place that are not like you. Uh, Father, we submit our hearts to you. Uh, we pray that you forgive us of our sins, uh, those that we know of and those things about us that we don't even know. Reveal those things to us, Lord God, that we might ask for your forgiveness and progressively become more like your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Spirit of the living God, come and be here in this place, Lord God. We pray that you're pleased with what you see and what you hear. Father God, we give you our praises today, Lord God. Uh, let us do it without hesitation and without reservation. We love you so much. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. that the God we serve is greater than any problem, any situation, any pandemic, any virus, any demonic agenda that the enemy is trying to bring. And we serve a God who's greater than it all. So Lord, we worship you right now. hearts are thankful and grateful for your greatness. So we pour out our parade to you all. 
Magnificent, being all powerful, all knowing, omnipresent. That God, you're at all places at all times, and nothing escapes your eye. It's not a sparrow from the sky that can drop from the sky, fall to the ground without you noticing it. We thank you, Lord. God, you know every person's thoughts before we can even think them. We're so honored. Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence. Can you just welcome the presence of the Lord here today? Just, just welcome him. Even in your homes, wherever you are, just welcome his presence. 
again, he's omnipresent. He is here with us. He is here with you. Yes, Lord. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Have your way today. Heal us, O oh God. Set us free. Restore us. Forgive us. Make us one. seated. we like to welcome you here to Commitment Church, both physically, thank the Lord, hallelujah, <laughs> and, and, and also uh, continuously watching and uh, following us online and participating. And, and listen, even though you may be, uh, even though you may be online, we like to encourage you to, uh, to not lose focus, because it's very easy to just get up and mull around in a house and stay in your pajamas and roll out of bed and we encourage you get up brush your teeth comb your hair put some clothes on pretend like you're going to church right get the kids ready too that'd be pretty cool right and and, and sit down and, and pretend like you're in church um, because we are the church the building is not the church praise the lord amen it is not the church but we are so privileged to have technology that allows us to still uh, exist together as one uh, in the presence of God. So again, like to welcome you. And, and, and the entire month of July, we have been doing something different, if you would. We felt that we shouldn't rush back and just, okay, let me give you this sermon series and pretend like nothing's happened to us, that we haven't gone through some uh, physical, emotional, spiritual trauma, if you would, as the church. But we wanted to make sure that we were uh, engaging with God, with each other. So we slowed down to talk uh, to God about our love for him, our love for each other. Forgiveness, accepting his forgiveness because, listen, honestly, throughout this pandemic, the church in many cases has misstepped, especially when it comes to this whole racial and culture divide that we've experienced uh, and are experiencing, unfortunately, um, that the church has to take ownership of it and and be the light in the dark world, proving that we're his disciples that for our, with by our love for one another. So so there's been some responsibility we have to take. So maybe we need to ask God for forgive, forgiveness because we've misstepped, we've misspoke, or whatever it may be. Uh, but then also just uh, be able to forgive each other because the reality is is that. Uh, God has placed forgiveness in his model prayer for us. So that's something that we need to always be attentive to, making sure that we are people who forgive, that we have hearts that are set to forgive. Because we live long enough, you have relationships long enough, we're going to offend each other. But we have to be quick forgivers. And then also unity. Uh, listen, a house divided cannot stand, right? Your personal house, meaning your family, cannot stand uh, divided, uh, nor can the house of God stand divided. So it's super important that we uh, become one, even as Jesus and the Father are one, and maintain that spirit of unity. So these are three intentional categories of prayer that God placed on my heart to, to just disseminate with you here today and also uh, in your homes. It's something that we shouldn't stop doing, but it's something that we need to make sure that we're focusing on. Amen. So let's begin with our first. Uh, and as always, this is kind of like our POW service, a time of prayer and worship, prayer and worship. So when we are praying, you'll, just, you'll be able to sit down and reflect. And uh, the first category, again, is love. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verses 9 through 11, it reads this. Just as the Father has loved me, this is Jesus is saying, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, I'm going to define a few words for you. The word, first word I want to give you is the, the word abide. Abide in my love. It means this, to remain, to tarry, to continue to be present in. Hear that? So it says to you and I that we cannot stop being in the presence of his love. And it's very easy to do that relationally, right? It's like, ah, oh, no, I'm not going to love you today, right? 
because of what you said, what you did to me. We, we cease to be present in his love. The definition goes on to be, and this is really, really important. It means to be held and kept in his love. We need that every now and then, don't we? You know, there's sometimes I can't be present in his love, but what he'll do is what? Wrap his arms around me and say, no, 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 no. I'm going to hold you and I'm going to keep you right where you need to be. And then here's the last part of that definition of remain or abide. It means to remain as one. Right? Think about that. So it is absolutely impossible not to be one if you're aware abiding in his love. So whenever we're not abiding in his love, chances are there's disunity. Chances are, right, there's division. Abide in his love. Verse 11, John 15. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you. All right? So many times that is such it's, it escapes us so much as the body of Christ. Joy. You see the most miserable people on the face of the earth are followers of Jesus Christ who lack joy. You can have sinners be lack joy and they many times are better, than the, better off than the Christians. But when you're a follower of Jesus Christ and your you're, 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 uh, access to joy is through Christ, right? And matter of fact, I have the fruit of the spirit of joy and it's not being exercised in me. It's almost like it's a double Debbie Downer. Right? Because we're, we're, we've lost connection with our source. And therefore, it is almost like exponentially worse. Because we're choosing to live apart from him. That your joy may be full, complete. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater has no one than lo, no love. Greater love has no one than this that one lay down his life for his friend. The words lay down means this to assign a proper place. And I think that's coupled with Philippians 2. Right? Consider others more important than you yourselves. Didn't see that didn't say that you shouldn't consider yourself. It didn't say that that you shouldn't pay attention to yourself, self-care, right? But there's times that you need to assign a place for yourself in certain situations to make sure that love is evident, right? Parents, you understand this. Moms, you understand this, right? It's almost like if you want to love your child where they need to be loved in that moment, you have to reassign a place for your emotions, right? You have to assign a different place for your desires, Right? You desire to sleep, but there's sometimes you lose sleep because of what? Your love for your child. You will assign sleep for yourself in another place because of your love for someone else. As followers of Jesus Christ, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we got to get to that point that, you know what? I don't feel like it. My emotion says I shouldn't. Everything about me says protect me, but I have to relocate myself my emotions, my desires in a different place, at least temporarily, so that we can abide in his love. You are my friends if you do what I command. You are my friends. This is Jesus saying to you and I, you are his friends. You're his friends. I right, think about that intimacy with Christ. You are my friends if you do what I command. If you carry out, if you be the author of a thing. See, there are certain times that God will assign things to your life to do in a relationship scenario that you are the only author for. There'll be things that God will tell me to do in relationship context that he won't tell you to do. There'll be things that he'll tell you to do something in a relationship context that he won't tell me to do. But yet somehow it's the same, right? Because it comes from the same source. So the challenge is, is that we must be men and women who, who have this period of time in life that we become the authors of whatever he has commanded us to do. Remember, the Apostle Paul talks about that, that the word of God is, should be what written on our hearts, that we are living epistles. 
right? That the author, the unique authorship of the Word of God should be inscribed in our heart, our behavior, our life, our character, so that, so that at the end of the day, we know that we are His friends because we're doing exactly what He says to do. This is genuine love. This is genuine love for each other. This is genuine love for Christ. And this is non-negotiable before God to the point that he says, I will give you my spirit, the fruit of my spirit, to make sure that you get this thing done. Can we pray and just ask God to have that courage to abide in his love, to lay down our lives, to reassign, to assign a proper place for our own life, that we will do what he commands, to know with great confidence that we are his friends. Can you just pray that today for yourself, for your family, maybe for relationships that maybe God is challenging you? Wow, you know, you probably should lay your uh, uh, lay yourself aside. In other words, you need to now, for this relationship to work, for this relationship to truly exemplify the love of Jesus Christ, assign a different place for your emotions. Lord, help us to love as you have modeled love for us, even to the point of death, death on a cross. Jesus, you could have called down legions of angels to rescue yourself, but you you strategically assigned a proper place for your life for us. Help us to realize this in our lives, my God. We need your help. You've given us the helper. Help us to rely on him, Holy Spirit. Help us to not resist his love through us. In Jesus' name. Can we stand to our feet as we continue to worship? you wonder, well, how can I build this relationship? (laughs) Well, God can also teach us how to build a relationship with him and have an intimate relationship with him. And um, it's, it's like your child, as Pastor was speaking, you have your child, you have your loved one. And the only way you build on that relationship is by spending time with them. And that's the same with Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, taking time with him, embracing him, embracing his presence. We get caught up in the world and all the the rush, and all he wants to do is spend time with us. So let's take this time right where you are to just embrace his presence to recognize that he is amazing and that at times we don't have words but just sitting there in his presence he knows your heart praise the Lord hallelujah we glorify you Jesus we worship you We welcome your your presence.
Wow. Lord, as we were singing that song, that just reminded that that's probably why we struggle with being in your presence. Because in your presence, we come undone. Lord, we just can't remain the same. Matter of fact, no one has ever ever beheld the face of God and lived. Wow. Matter of fact, God, when people wrestle with you and get face to face, their names are changed, which means that our identity, our character, our past, our present, our future is undone. Lord, let us be a people that do not run from that panic in your presence, but be willing to pause and sit and just come undone, Lord, because Apparently, we need to be fixed. Lord, uh, what we may deem undone is really done. What we may deem uh, being turned upside down is really right side up. So, Father, let us never escape your presence, but pursue it. And even now, God, we're doing this. We want to experience you we want to know that we've been in your presence we don't want to want to remain the same you may be seated our next category forgiveness Hmm. it's really one of the first steps in being undone right and in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 25 through 27 that we'll skip to 29 32 it says therefore laying aside all falsehood speak truth each one of you with his neighbor for we are members of one another be angry and yet do not sin do not let the sun go down on your anger do not give the devil an opportunity this sort of opportunity means this don't give the devil space any portion any inhabited place don't give him any room at all verse 29 let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth but only such a word as good for edification according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those who hear this is Pastor Cedric's a bridge virgin. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Unless you're going to say something good to someone. Verse 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. The word grieve means this, to make sorrowful and to offend. Don't make the Holy Spirit sorry or feel offended himself. By whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Verse 32. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Just as. So if he's forgiven you, a mile you forgive a mile, right? So, so if you can, just pause right now and just think about areas in which God has forgiven you. Just close your eyes and think about that. If you're at home, just sit and soak in that thought. Where has God forgiven me? How has God forgiven me? Now, I don't know about you. (laughs) There's been some really bad things I've done. Really bad things I've thought. And then why do I have the audacity not to forgive someone by that same measure? Does God stop forgiving Cedric? No. He forgives me over and over and over and over and over and over over and over and over again. Let 
and in this church, remember, when we embrace his forgiveness for us, it then allows us to become men and women who don't let bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander, slander be a part of our lives. It allows then the Spirit of God to help us to be kind to one another, tenderhearted, patient, giving God space to do what he does in each one of our hearts. Can you just maybe pause right now and ask God to forgive you for where you have fallen short in this area of forgiving others? Can you even now purpose in your heart to now intentionally forgive those who have offended you? And maybe even now you should pause to set a time to go reconcile with your brother or sister. Maybe you left the house with your spouse angry, your parents angry, your children angry. Maybe you left last week from your employer ticked off and angry at somebody. Maybe you're, just, you're mad at the president. You're mad at Congress and senators. Maybe you're mad at the world, the system of this world. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Be angry, but sin not. It's almost like this. This is how God helps me. What is my motive of being angry? Am I angry at what angers him, or am I just angry because it makes me upset? Does it make him upset? If it makes him upset, it's, it's beautiful because it's not my job to reconcile that. I need to not leave room, as the scripture says, for the wrath of God. Can you have the courage to start leaving the room for the wrath of God right now? God, I'm not going to take matters in my own hands with my words and my deeds, but God, I'm going to leave room for your wrath to intervene. Give me a heart. Give us hearts to forgive. Evie, could you uh, pray that please for us? stand to our feet and before we sing this next song can you just say the words
to our Father and just say, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for freeing me. Thank you for casting my sins as far as the east is from the west. Thank you for not remembering them anymore. Thank you, God, that you do not hold my sins against me. falls, it won't prevail, cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph, my God will never fail, oh my God will never fail, I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Whoa. wages he will win. I'm not backing down from any giants, no, cause I know how the story ends. Yes, I know how the story ends. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle. The battle's already won. We don't have to fight at all. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good, yeah. You turn it for good, yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turned it for good. You turned it for good. If you believe that, sing along with us. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. And you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. Yeah. You turn it for good. Oh. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. 
victory. I'm going to see a victory. Yes, Put your sir. Hands up. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see you. Yeah. back together because you're here with us. Thank you for being here this morning. We are coming to the table again today. It is a special day at a special time. It is actually our first coming to the table since we have reopened. Yes, that's right. Let's, let's be thankful for that. Be thankful for that. And there is some importance to coming to the table. I don't know about you guys. I was kind of raised by one of those old school grandmothers. So before we even start talking about coming to the table, Let's first get ourselves clean. She used to have us wash her hands, wash her face. We'd come outside, we'd be a little messy, and she'd have her wash her face, and we can do the same thing. Let's just take a moment right now, close our eyes, look into our hearts. Are we in the right place for this right now? Our, is our relationship with the Lord together? Have we got it together? Is there anything that's unreconciled that we have with the Lord, friends, family? And if so, this is a time to put it at the Lord's feet. Put it at his feet before we do this. So let's just take that moment. So this morning as we do this, we all know what this is about. We know that this represents our Lord's body, his blood that was broken on the cross for us. He died for us. But there is something more important. And this word has been coming up all day. The Holy Spirit has been putting this word in this service, in this powered POW service all day. And why he did it was about our relationship, our relationship with our Father that this was about restoring our relationship with him. Think about it when you guys sit down and you eat. And it's been a little tough right now. We're going through this period where you can't be together with people. But how many people miss sitting down at a dinner table with somebody so that you can restore that relationship where you can get together, you can talk. Where if you're a child and it's a parent, you can bring your troubles to him. And that's what this is about. That right now we can sit down and do that in this moment. So as we're all doing that, recognize that our relationship is restored, that we have that memory of that. And the Lord told us, don't forget that, because our relationship always was part of being part of what he was about and what he did for us on the cross. So right now, if we can just get ready to partake together, just take a minute, get ourselves together, give it a good shake. 
Is there anybody who has not been served this morning? Anybody who's missing? All right. All right, if we could just stand to our feet. I just want to pray real quick. Lord, we are just so thankful. Thankful for your relationship that has been restored through your blood on the cross. Through your broken body on the cross this morning, Lord. Thank you that we can come together, be in this place, even online, Lord. That we can be part of sharing a meal with you, Lord. So that we can get ourselves together, that we can find you, Lord. That we can find peace and comfort being at the table with you right now, Lord. Oh, this is just a moment, Lord, that we can just be in your presence. Learning, growing, being a part of it, Lord. Releasing ourselves to you, Lord. And reminding ourselves how important that relationship is. We talk about your love for us, Lord. Who else would go to the cross for us but you? So we thank you and praise you for it, Lord. So Lord, as we just partake of this, Lord, we're looking forward to continuing that relationship with you, continuing that relationship we have with our Father. That we want to continue to know you, continue to love you, and be loved by you, Lord. So Lord, is this time as we take this, thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for your your life, your death on the cross, and your, your being renewed, reborn, and coming again, and living again for us, Lord. So we lift you up. All right, if we can all just partake here together. Taking this minute so we can just take together. And again, just remembering, remember what he did. Remembering that relationship that we have. give our Lord a big hand of praise, thanking him for that relationship and renewed relationship that we have with him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Your love, your love 
believe it. Say a miracle can happen right now. A miracle can happen now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit of that to the Lord again just no music and you could just welcome the Spirit of God who is here today with us a miracle can happen now for the Spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all the evidence is all Spirit of the Lord is here. See, a miracle can happen now. A miracle can happen now. For the Spirit of the Lord. For the Spirit of the Lord. We surrender in this moment right now. The evidence is all around. The evidence is all around. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Can we welcome him? We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in our presence today. Thank you for joining us, O oh Lord. We glorify, we magnify your name here today, O oh God. Thank you for joining us in this house and in our homes right now. We bless your name, God. We honor you. We honor you today. We honor you today. Mm. You may be seated as we pray our, our last uh, category again. Um, if you're here for the first time or you're watching for the first time, we have something called POW, Power of Worship. And we felt that coming back for the first time that we needed to slow down and be with God and just be restored and refreshed, um, not rush into normacy, you know. Um, and so we uh, define three categories, uh, love, forgiveness, and the last is unity. And, and what we've been learning is that uh, you can't be unified if you don't love, and you can't be unified if you haven't reconciled things with God, if you haven't made things right. So this is a wonderful opportunity for us to be restored in the Lord as individuals, but then also collectively as the church. And our hope is that what God does, that commitment, it will spill over into homes, uh, into other churches for generations to come. So last category, real quickly, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 34. It reads this, And the congregation of those who believed. Now remember, this is post-Jesus Christ ascending, right, uh, back into heaven. This is uh, after Peter uh, preached this sermon. Uh, and thousands were saved. Think about this. And the congregation of those who believe were of one heart and soul. The word heart means denotes the center of all of physical and spiritual life, the fountain and seat of the thoughts, passion, desires, appetites, affections, purposes, and endeavors. So everything that you are, past, present, future, if you would, they said that everything that we are, heart and soul were one. We're one. And it says, and not one of them, that's not one of them, claimed that anything belonged to him as, was his own. Wouldn't it be awesome if we can get to that point that we own nothing? But all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And abundant grace was upon them all. For there was not a needy person among them. Can you imagine church being that way? Not a needy person among us. But it starts with unity. And unity starts with a heart and a soul that says, 
I am going to be one. I'm going to be one as, as the Father is one. Jesus and the Father is one. We're going to be unified at all costs. In other words, I'm going to listen, even if it means that I have to get to a point in my life that nothing belongs to me. Now, here's the context of this. Jesus, after dying on the cross, he was resurrected, right? And Jesus said, hey, don't touch me because I have to first, what? Go to the Father. So he then goes to the Father, he comes back, right? So think about that. Uh, It doesn't say what particular timeline, but he goes to the Father, he goes to heaven, comes back, right, in his glorified body, walks through a wall, right? Think about this. And then later on, he says, hey, guess what? You need to understand that I'm going to send you out with power and authority to tell everybody uh, about me. Okay, by the way, I got to go again. So he ascends to the heaven, and he says, the way you've seen me leave is the same way I'm going to come. Now, if you were them, what, you would, what, what would you be thinking right now? The scripture says, listen, this is the imagery. He says that they're standing and looking and gazing. Almost like, okay, when you come back. Why? It's because he already did it before. He already said, hey, I'll be back. You know, I got to go to my father. I got to go to heaven, come back, glorify body. And he did it, if you would, let's say he did it in a day, an hour or whatever, that he, he reconciled what he said. So I would think logically, if he now tells me again, I got to go. And the angel of the Lord says, he's going to come back. I would then think that he's coming back, not necessarily 2,000 years later. And that's why historically proper, during that time and day, the disciples would say this, and they would greet each other with this word, Maranatha. And the word Maranatha means, come quickly, Lord, come quickly. So like there was this anticipation that what? Christ was coming back. So think about this. If today you knew that Christ was coming back tomorrow, what would happen to your property in your mind? I don't need this. Right? That's why when a person, the older they get, right, wisdom begins to set in. And the older a person gets, they know that I am closer there with him than here. And then the things of this world begins to grow dim. You know why we want to hold on to stuff of this world? It's because we think we're going to be here for a while. You know why we put money in 401k? Because we think we're going to live after retirement. Because the things of this world are so vivid to us that we think we have ownership of it. We think that it all belongs to me and it's mine. So I'm selfish, self-centered, and it's all about me and mine and me and mine because heaven is really not a reality to you. Because more and more, when more, when heaven becomes more and more reality to you, the things of this world loses its grip on you. Then it becomes common property. In other words, God, how do you want to use this? Because I'm attached to heaven. Colossians 1. Right? that Jesus Christ becomes first place in my life. Colossians 3, set your mind on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of the Father, right? So I am becoming more and more detached from this world. So when God says, put it in a common place, in other words, it's really saying, let me be in control of it. And that's why you fast forward that Ananias and Sapphira, who ultimately tries to hold on to it, they drop dead. Because it doesn't belong to you. And that's when a community of people become one. Because think about it, um, where your treasures are, that's where your heart will be. So if my heart is really all about him, that means everything I own is all about him. And one thing is for sure, if he's, if, if, 
one thing is for sure God is all about is all about his glory and the good of others. And therefore, there will not, there should not be a needy person. It means a destitute, a person in want, or a poor person among us. Everybody's needs should be met because there's common property. In other words, we've given up control. And when God says, put it in a pot, you put it in a pot. You don't put it in a pot when the preacher says put it in a pot. You put it in a pot because he said put it in a pot. You, you do it because he said give up control. Make sense? And it somehow allows us to be unified, right? Because we have a unified heart. And the beautiful thing about this, think about this. And with great power, the apostles were given testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And abundant grace was upon them all. That's what unity brings, church. That's what unity brings. Can we pray? Pray this for yourself. God, help me to be of one heart and one soul with my brother and sisters in Christ. Help me to not claim that anything belongs to me. Help me to adopt and apply this common property principle that I give up possession of everything that I own. And help my obedience lead to not a needy person being in our church. Help it lead to testimonies of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That people of all nations and tribes and tongues will come to the saving knowledge of your son Jesus Christ because our hearts are one. Unify us, we pray. We need you, God. We need to have courage in this, Lord. Uh, we need to have confidence in you in this. We need to obey you in this, God. It is so important. Disconnect us from it, from earth. Connect us with heaven. Let the things of this world grow strangely dim, my God. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for a renewed love for you and renewed love for each other. Thank you, God, for the forgiveness that is found in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that you've given us hearts to forgive quickly and be reconciled with not only you, God, but with man. Thank you, God, for a spirit of unity that is a part of our church for generations to come. That, God, you've called people of all nations and tribes and tongues to be a part of this church. Help us, God, to resemble that and reflect that and represent that, God, in the highways and the byways, compelling people to come in, that your house may be filled with people from all nations and tribes and tongues, Lord, who are then uh, equipped with the gospel of Jesus Christ to be transformed personally, transform this community and this world like never before, turning it upside down or right side up for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, for generations to come, that we can escort the presence of Jesus Christ back up on this earth, Lord, because we are a church that is without spot or blemish. So we celebrate you, my God. We acknowledge you today. We glorify you today. We bless your name, oh God. We bless your name, God. We, we hallow your name. And we thank you, God, for the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us to obey you, oh God. And we thank you so much through the finished work of Jesus Christ that Satan is defeated and darkness is dispelled because Jesus Christ is what? He is Lord of all. We bless your name, oh God, in Jesus' name. Can we stand to our feet? We're going to sing one last song, but as we are preparing to sing this song, remember, there's always an opportunity to give at, at our, our church commitment. We don't pass the tray. We have giving stations that are in the front, in the, uh, in the lobby, the foyer, on the way out. The greeters can...
can show you how to do it, how to give through check, cash. You can literally uh, drop it off at the church office throughout the week if you want to give that way. You can give through the uh, church website, church app. You can text to give at uh, 77977. Text the words Commitment Church to 77977. Now, again, as a church, we don't beg. We don't beg. But periodically, well, not periodically. We always thank you for giving. But periodically, I like to remind you, don't take that for granted. <laughs> you know, don't take for granted that we're, we're not a church that just, you know, badger you with giving. But just be generous. Let, let, let your heart uh, communicate your love for Jesus and your love for others that the gospel of Jesus Christ can continue throughout all generations, right? Because others gave before you, that's why you're here, right? That's why we can keep the lights on, keep the restrooms clean, you know, all the necessities that goes along with church. You know, that's why we're able, if you didn't know, that we have a church in Columbia, you know, that God is doing some amazing things there. Columbia, uh, uh, South America, we're, we're in the process of planting a church in William Mincing, Pennsylvania. You know, God is doing some amazing things through your gifts. But the more you give, the more we can what? We can do, we can go. So be generous and, and don't, don't let uh, uh, the kindness of the Lord uh, be uh, misused. You follow what I'm saying? So just be obedient to the Lord and he will bless you abundantly. Lastly, tonight at 4 o'clock, does anybody know what's happening? All right, we're going to have a, a, a time of what? We are one prayer gathering. We are one prayer gathering in our parking lot. We are one prayer gathering in the parking lot. Please come back. Go get, get some breakfast, get some rest, come back. We are one prayer walk, not walk, sorry me, sorry. We are one prayer gathering in the parking lot at 4 p.m. Bring your lawn chairs, bring your umbrellas because it probably still will be bright outside. Make sense? All right, so tell someone about it, tell other churches about it. This is not for, only for us, but for everyone. Make sense? Love you. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face shine upon you. And thank you so much for joining us on Commitment Down Online week after week. And we're so blessed to have you with us from Florida and all over the place. Uh, we're excited to have you join us every single week. May God bless you until we see you again. Amen. All right. Facing challenges, but they won't break me because they don't make me because you hold me. I walk through valleys, but they they don't scare me because you're with me. I've got my mind made up, and I will turn this place to a place of praise. As I do, I know you'll bring about the change. This is an offering.
Lord, you are here with me. Hey, no fear, no fear. Cause you're here, I live in freedom. Cause you're here, Lord, I believe that I can be fearless. Cause you are here with me. So, so you're right here. Right here. This is where praise breaks out. Whoa. Right here, right now. This is where the walls, this is where the walls come down. Clap your hands. Cause you're here, every chain is breaking I can be feeling, cause you are here with me Yeah, yeah. you're here, I live in freedom Cause you're here, Lord I believe that I can be feeling, cause you are here with me Yeah, I can be feeling, cause you are here with me God bless you all.